All right, cool. All right, what's up, Rebel fam? Thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, you know, very exciting, very exciting. We have uh, a gentleman I've, I've mentioned um, a few weeks back because it was just such a powerful story. And uh, because of some really amazing people in the industry, shout out Zoe Wilder, um, we were able to connect with him and actually hear it straight from the source. So not just reading a, a news article or watch another interview, we got him right here. So I'm very excited about this. Uh, crazy story, it's crazy it had to happen in the first place, but I'm really grateful to have an evangelist that can kind of break it down for us. So first and foremost, I just wanna welcome Corvain Cooper to our Rebel audience. Corvain, how you doing today, bro? Oh man, we just chilling, just chilling. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, man, it's great to have you. Uh, we also have my co-host Lulu. As always, Lulu, how you doing? Hey, everyone. Hey, really excited to be here as well. Thank you, Corvain, for being on our um, session tonight. Really looking forward to hearing your story because it's um, it's a beautiful one. It's a fucked up one, but it's a beautiful one. Yeah. Well said. Well said. <laughs> all right. So, I mean, let's just get into it, man. Um, first of all, before all of this stuff happened, who is Corvain, right? Who who was this guy? Corvain grew up, you know, in the ghetto, you know, trying to, you know, move fast. And Corvain, look into my eyes, it's coming too. So get ready. You know, Zoe, Zoe's over there cooking it up right now. So we're looking for it to come out, you know, around February, around, you know, Black History Month. We're thinking about that's that's the day that we're working on. But it's a series and you get to see the whole Corvain. You get to see little Corvain. You get to see everything, how I became the man I am today, all the stuff that I went through. But before you get to meet this Corvain, Corvain had to, you know, learn the hard way. You know, Corvain wanted to make fast money. He never wanted to hurt nobody. So he just wanted to sell some marijuana and, you know, do all nonviolent crimes and um, just try to make a living and try to live above his means and try to, you know, try to get the nice things in life. And, you know, experience, you know, different things growing up in different cars and different this. And um, it all started with my father was a hustler. So I already had the hustler kind of spirit in me, you know, so it just starts there. And then, you know, it goes into, you know, it's a real, real, real touchy story. And it's, 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 it's going to make LA from a different perspective because I'm tired of everyone just looking at LA. It's like, like I just came back from Oakland and, um, and we're going back to do because I'm going to speak at 710 Labs, too. But I just came back and people just have a perception of just this low rider gang banger. Everyone's a low rider. You know, I just hate it. You know, so mm -hmm. I want my book to not only that, just change the perception of L.A. Like, you know, we have hustlers and players and, you know, I've kicked it with all the celebrities and I've done all the little stuff that, you know, that I see that's being done nowadays. And I'm just like. You know, no one looks at L.A. like that. And I'm just like, damn, you know, somebody needs to write a story. And I was just one of the bases of it was just a fact of being in the feds. When you're during federal time, you're in 50 states all at one time. So you're with all the states. You know, you're with someone from everywhere. So that's the only place you can go on this planet if you're going to be in all 50 states at one time. So it's a perception of L.A. And I'm about to change that with this book. OK, so. Your pops is a hustler, like in your family, were you being in, encouraged to go a certain route? Did you do that on your own? Like wh what were they influencing you to do? Well, I guess coming from the ghetto and coming from the hood, when you start bringing the money home, they're not telling you no either. You know what I mean? They're mm -hmm. not telling you no, you I'm paying lights. I moved out at 16, you know, so you know, I, I pay bills kind of early. So you're paying bills, you're starting to have new cars and you're starting to do this. And then, you know, you are the one everyone's depending on now. You, it's kind of like I took the torch. It's like, well, my dad went to the feds when I was 18, but up until, up until 17, 18, you know, I kind of had all the nice clothes or I had all this, I was wearing meat coats in high school, you know, so he had me kind of fly. So when you get cut off from there, you're like, what, what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? So now you're, 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 you, they throw you to the wolves. Now 
you were used to getting the Jordans every week and you were used to getting all this stuff every week, you know, and getting allowance and all the stuff. Now that's cut off. Now you got to go to the wolves and figure what to the wolves on what you're going to do now to keep this whole little image that you've had up for 17, 18 years. So when all that occurred, it was like they, they passed the torch and I kind of ran with it. So now, you know, I was the one keeping the parties going and keeping the family together and, you know, keeping everything on a tight net. And by seeing stuff, I said this on Vanity Fair, by, by seeing my granny, rest in peace, she died while I was in, was in federal prison. But, you know, she worked for Harrison Ford. He paid for her funeral too while I was gone. But by her working for Harrison Ford, I knew what real money looked like at a young age. And I knew what drug money looked like, you know. So I was like, oh, God. Let me see. I got something to chase. Like I've been on Mulholland and meeting still Steven Spielberg and Melissa Ford when she helped write E.T. You know, so getting to see these things at a young age is and then my dad hustling with Harry O and Free Ray Rick and all this type of stuff and having seven, eight cars and, you know, and all the big chains. And I, was, I got to see the ignorant money and I got to see what real money looks like. Like, damn, he's in a, a, a Toyota phone runner with pro wings on, but he's in Mahalan. You know what I mean? So, you know, I got to see the balance. So it gave me a lot to chase, you know? So I was on a mission then, you know? So when I was hustling, I always had a mission of what I was trying to do and trying to do for my family. And I did this. I kept my kids in private school and I just wanted the best for everybody. Okay. And, and break it down to me how things started to go sideways. Well, what happened was, you don't even notice this. Another thing I want people to know, you don't know when it's going sideways. When the feds mm -hmm. are coming, a it's not a, you don't get a ring the alarm and your pager doesn't go off, you know. So I got out the game. I, I hustled all the way up to like 09 or 10 where I was selling weed. And I stopped selling weed. And then, so when you're taking the time out, because we're losing now, it's going bad. Now we're sitting... You know, we want to start off when you start sitting pounds, you start sending the pounds. Boom. The pounds are touching. You want to get greedy. Now you want to send crates. We made it to pounds where we was up to sending 40 pounds a day. You know what I mean? So you can get 200 pounds there a week just in the mail and 800 pounds a month. But of course, you want more and you want to get greedy. You want more stuff. And as you try to obtain and want more stuff, you're actually putting a big target on your back. You know what I mean? And then, you know, we lose the first crate at 338 pounds, which started the conspiracy in 2009. It's how the conspiracy actually started. They find that. But you know what they say at trial? They didn't stop there. They went and shot more crates. So they, they're they thinking in their minds, if you can lose 338 pounds, well, how many pounds do they really have? You know what I mean? So then, you know, it starts to trail and they start to follow you. But then I fall back. I say, oh, okay. I feel it's the guy that I'm dealing with. I'm thinking that it's him, you know? So I say, my hands are I hope he gets money. So I tell the guy, you know what? I'm cool. Let's just let bygones be bygones. I went and got some weed for my connect. You lost it still, you know? So let's let bygones be bygones. That's cool. I'm cool. I'm going to take the loss. Let me just lose my last little money. Start a little store. I started a clothing store for my daughter. You know what I mean? With both of my daughter's face on it. Let me start a clothing line. Let me just do what I really love because I like to dress and I like I like clothing, you know? So that's how, we, that's how we're, we're going to get to 40 tons in a second. So the conspiracy is 40 tons too, by the way. If you look up the case, for people that don't know the case, go to October 2013 to 2018. I went to trial. Me, Evelyn LaChapelle and Natalia Way, we all three went to trial in Charlotte, North Carolina. Look up the Charlotte Observer charlotte 2013 look up the trial look up the 40 times so you can know it's real you want to be a part of something that's real just we didn't just make this number up at the top of our head so as things are going along we go and i'm just living my life but i got caught with one pound of marijuana at the Laker game in uh um 2009 so, but i kept prolonging 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 pushing it back paying the lawyer money so in 2011, I said, let me just put this behind me because it's not going to go anywhere. I have to go turn myself in due time. So I turned myself in 2011. I get out 2012. I do it one year for a bottle of codeine and one pound of marijuana. So those are my two priors. I go live my life. I, I think it's all behind me. I hear the guy 
as 19 years that I was doing business with. And um, so I said, I guess this guy back, you know, he got him and his wife. So let me go on, you know, let me send him some money. Let me write him. Let me see what's going on. So that was a bad move. So that's how to get my address. So now I'll write him. Now, I don't know that he's working with the feds or building a big conspiracy against me. It's been three, four years. I haven't seen this person since 2009. So you could be riding around right now, you that's driving around in the car, whoever was hustling and thought they was finished hustling. And now you want to do podcasts now. You don't want to hustle no more, but you started the weed to start the podcast. They know about it. You have a five year statute of limitations, everybody. So before the five years of statute of limitations and you have to exit the conspiracy, it's not up. It's four years. So now January comes. I've been out six months. I'm getting my clothing line. I got Charles Barkley wearing it. Wale. I got Faith Evans. I got all the celebrities wearing it. I'm using my celebrity card. You know, uh, Tiger, everybody's wearing it. And um, they come knock on the door and say, hey, remember North Carolina 2000? In the 2000s, you sold the marijuana, get in the back seat, boom, 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 slam, all in front of my kids. I just promised my kids that I'm not going anywhere. They're using the same one pound. It's the only one pound of marijuana I've ever got caught with my entire life. The rest is he say, he say. So they use the same Beverly Hills cop that pulled me over from the club that won the Lakers won the championship back at the trial. So that's like double jeopardy. I just served my time for it. So they used that at my trial. They convicted me, Evelyn, LaChapelle, and Natalia Wade in October for the um, for the entire day. They, they charged me as a leader for the entire the conspiracy. The more you hide and the more I've never been in North Carolina is one of the reasons why I went to trial. I never touched the money because Evelyn and Natalia touched the money that went through the banks. And um, I never mailed any of the marijuana. I have paid some money. So the more you don't touch it and the more you think that nobody knows that you're this big old ghost, the more you become the leader and the more everything is going to get blamed on you. So the more that you think that you're smart, they don't think you're smart. So just keep in mind, I never touched the marijuana. I never touched the money. That made me the leader and I got a life sentence without touching anything. So you don't have to touch it. You can be the mastermind. You can think you're slick. And um, the slicker you are, the worse it's going to be. So you you kept your hands clean-ish for the most part, as possible, as best possible, you got two relatively minor offenses, the codeine and the, um, that one pound of marijuana. That's no longer on my record anymore because I was on Prop 64 and Prop 47. So that's not even no longer on my jacket anymore. But, but that is then also used against you again later. Because that's how you get the 851. Now when I get, now when a new thing comes, That's it for you, buddy. You know, if you want to take this to trial, which I'm going to trial because I'm having, I have never even been to Charlotte in my life. So why am I not going to go to trial? To me, you're dumb if you don't pick go to trial. You know, yeah. that to me, yeah. you've never been, you haven't touched anything. You know, I mean, uh, the people I've never even met, I feel if me and you are going to make money, I don't need to meet you. If we have the same idea we're supposed to make money, we have an agreement, correct? Boom, we have agreement. I'm going to mail the marijuana. You're going to mail the money back. I didn't meet. It ended up being a girl that was selling some marijuana. She sold 10,000 pounds. It, was, it ended up being a woman that I've never even met. She says this in black and white at the trial that she's never met me. So they said, well, how do you know that you're talking to him on the phone? Are you, are, are you a voice expert? I mean, you have to be a voice expert then to say that you're talking. To him. How, do you, how, do you, how do you know who you're talking to on the phone? And they have all these things that's going on. Spy shop, you can change your voice. You can do this. You know that you were talking to Corvain Cooper on the phone? And you've never met me a day in your life? And this is in black and white paper? You know, of course I don't think I'm getting convicted. You know what I mean? <laughs> so. All right. So this very unfortunate entire thing falls through, right? Kind of when you thought you were kind of like about to slide into home base. Right, right. right. So this is what year? Um, I went for one year, so I did eight years because it was from January. What year was did it start? Did your sentence start? I would say Jane, I would say 2011 because that's I got charged for that same one pound, so I did one year in the state and then eight in the fed, so it was nine total. 
Okay. So you you had to do seven in federal, which this was in eight. Louisiana. I did eight in the eight, federal. I'm sorry. Eight. Man, eight. And this is in and Louisiana. All, all, too. all that USPs, too. I've never been to a camp or a medium or a low or none of that. I have been in all USPs. I've seen eight murders and seven suicides. You know, so. Wow. It's a lot of stuff that you got to live with, with the aftermath of this whole thing, too. Right. And and this was this is in a state that you had never been to, right? Right. So it, it must have been very difficult for anybody to come visit you. Yeah, because it's in Louisiana. So you don't get visits. We're on lockdown all the time. It's, 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 it's a tough cookie, man. It ain't nothing to play with. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I wouldn't even want my worst enemy, which I don't even have any enemies. I wouldn't want no one to go through this. It's like, it's, it's a real thing. It's not nothing to play with. I, I honestly, I, I cannot even fathom what you've been through and your family has been through. Um, and despite it all, you have a very empowering story. Like this, this is a story with a, it's still go. I don't want to say it's a happy ending because I feel like you're just like the beginning of your trajectory, but it, it ends up being a happy story ultimately because you are let out. And a lot of people talk shit about the Trump administration, but it, but it's not all bad, right? Like there's, there's a positive story here. So can you talk to me about once you're, you know, doing your time, how did you even, how did you get out? Like what had to happen? Were you meeting with people? Were there, um, you, like, I kind of know cause I researched it, but I, but I want to hear like from you, what had to be true to make all of that happen? This is like, this is a long shot. This is, this ain't nothing that just kaboom, then it's, then it's just kaboom, right? You're praying on the reason why we own that, 240 tons, we own that, that executive clemency is better than lottery. That's what I said at the, at the airport when they first interviewed me. And the reason why we trademarked that immediately is because it is. You feel what I'm saying? And we're trying to get all the clemency people, you know, we're trying to get to do a clemency push with all the people. But it's better than the lottery because it's a lottery picket. This person has your life in a in a in a gumbo pack and he has to pull it out. And your number has to get called over two hundred thousand, maybe a hundred thousand million applications. It doesn't, it, you know, you don't know the number. And the chances are very, very, very slim. And then your chances of Trump doing it right? With all the scrutiny he's under, you're depending on, I have 156,000. I was one of the front runners. I had 156,000 signatures, thanks to all the people that, you know, that were voting on me. But what's going on is I'm still depending on a man that is saying that the election fraud, that he's not honoring the new president, that he's not, you know, he's not doing this and he's not doing that. You know what I mean? And he's, they talking about these rushed to capital and all the stuff that's going on during the time I'm banking on him. So that's why I have respect for this man. You feel what I'm saying? Because he already was going through enough stuff within himself, which him and Ivanka wrote me the other day too, by the way. And um, it's, it's just to go through all that and to worry about little old me and getting me out. And I was like the last second shot because at 1130 at night, I still wasn't called yet. You know, my name wasn't on the screen. They, they had names on the screen. So you only got the 12. If your name's not on there by 12, then good luck. He's getting on that plane. You know, so when I looked to my left, Trump was already getting on the, on the plane. And I didn't even know he's getting on the helicopter. And I didn't even know that I was called yet. You know, but they had already called my, Ivanka called my mom at 12.30. I found that out later after I got out, you know, but, you know, once I got the caller. But when, when I was in there, and that morning when I seen Biden getting on the plane and Trump getting on the helicopter, I thought it was over with for me because they ain't called my name yet. So how did how did you find out the that your name was, was chosen? I was coming from the showers. We had to take showers. It was coming off a very bad lockdown. So I looked to my left and I see him getting on the plane. I'm like, dang. 
because you know I got to fix my mind. You got to fix your mind and get ready back to do this time. You know, so I take a deep breath. I hear, I hear. I never forget this dude named Marquise He's from DC. He screamed out like, "Man, they probably back. the paperwork probably must them. You know, everybody was rooting on me. I'm like the go to guy. You know, so nobody they like, man, you ain't supposed to be in here for that. So I look to my left. Trump getting on the helicopter. You're not going to sign it on the helicopter. You know what I mean? So he's getting on. He's saying bye. Biden's getting elected in. It's early in the morning. He's getting inaugurated in. And uh, I got to figure this thing out. And um, I get back to the cell. It's maybe about, maybe there five minutes, 10, 20 minutes. It's like counselor on the range, man. We on lockdown. So there's no reason for a counselor to be on the range. You know what I mean? We're on the lockdown. Then we just got handcuffed to go to the shower. So when I hear the door click, you got to understand, that's a breach of security at a USP and under the, the circumstance of lockdown that we're under. Why would you handcuff me to the shower? I mean, the handcuff, put your hand to the tray slide to get handcuffed to just walk to the shower. And why would you come open my door? So then we opened the door. So you got five minutes to pack your shit up. You know, you know what I mean? You just got clemency. So it was just... That was it, man. That was the that was the deal breaker right there. That was the the moment I won't forget. I got the clemency papers in my hallway at the crib. You know, it's it's it's, it's big. You feel what I'm saying? It's 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 it's, it's a moment. And it's a moment I'll never forget. Wow, that like that just gave me chills thinking about it, and how you had already you already started mentally starting to like let it go. You were kind of just setting your mind straight, like all right. I got to figure out the, the next move. And then you get that news right at the last hour. That, that, wow, that's powerful. Cause it's like, you almost gave up. It was almost, it yeah. was almost give up time. Wow. Okay, man. All right. So, so in order to even get your name in that lottery, there was a lot of organizations that uh, were riding for you. And I can personally say this is for me, I heard about your story, maybe, probably November, um, because of uh, Clubhouse. And Clubhouse, Clubhouse and, I'm sure Clubhouse you know, Clubhouse is just starting to pop off. And uh, your boys, or your boy was talking on Clubhouse nonstop and was just spreading the word. Yeah, that's and my just, boy. That's my boy. And that's my friend of over 27 years, too, by the way. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah, so he was pumping it up, pumping it up on Club Clubhouse, believe it or not, Clubhouse was pivotal towards, you know, towards the ends because you got to get the people. It starts, you got to go where it starts at. It starts with Sherry Sakar is the first person to ever have a Corvette Cooper. You know what I mean? So it's much love to her. Sherry Sakar and Amy Pope is the first people to ever have a poster up first. Then comes, then comes the last prisoner project. Right. Really did, really did, really did a great job with while I was in jail, my re-entry, I'm a fellowship member of Last Prison Project. So Last Prison Project has been very, very pivotal to this point today, where we're even standing at today. You know what I mean? So they were, they were very, very pivotal. Then you have Brittany K. Barnett has been just tremendous to me, 40 tons. And the Buried Alive Project has been very, very, very always called and checked on me. And she's been, Brittany has been amazing. You know, so you got, you got Freedom Grow. They have been amazing. You know what I mean? You got Marijuana Matters have been amazing. You got everybody. It was like a conglomerate of everybody working together. And like I told you, the BET thing was pivotal. And Nas put up the money and worked with Eric and Rob Gomes. And they put that together for me. And I was, they put a big stage, at a big stage for everyone to hear the story. And I got letters poured in from everywhere, you know, so all those things were very, 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 very pivotal to, to, to me coming home. You know what I mean? So it was everybody working together. It's not just a, it's a unit. You need a machine. And I had a machine. And Patrick McGrew, my attorney, you cannot forget him. He never gave up on me. Patrick McGrew was great. We got, his, uh, we got 156,000 signatures. He wrote, he wrote my petition himself. And just Patrick's amazing. That's going to be my friend for the rest of my life. And um, Patrick never, never, never gave up. And we fought, we fought, we fought. He said, I'm not going to leave you in there. And he didn't, you know what I mean? So please make sure, Patrick, 
McGrew, man, it's, he did an amazing job, man. He did an amazing job. All pro bono, too. And can, can you just give us, like, um, a little bit of an understanding of what, when you say people are pivotal, what are they doing? What what things are pivotal? Is it is it getting your story out? Is it like, you know, dealing with court documents? What are the just some of the examples of things people are doing? As far as getting the story out, I would say, I would say BT and um and Patrick was getting the story out big because I, I was in the cover of New York Times a few times too, and you know getting the story out. I would go that route. If I would go, if I would go like promotional wise or getting getting the name out there, I would go last prison project, Sherry Sakar and Pova, Marijuana Matters, as far as pushing it, an initiative, you know what I mean, to hey, this guy does not deserve to be in here for life for marijuana. Boom. You know what I mean? So to keep the story going and to keep the name going to in order to get the 156,000 signatures. You needed all three of those things. So this is not one thing to get the machine all the way working, to be a frontliner, to be in the front of, of the group. Yeah, you need all you need all of them. You know, you need you need you need all of them to work hand in hand because one can't work without the other. Because if you don't know the story, then you're, you're just gonna pass right by you. You feel what I'm saying? So to know the story, to know to look it up, to know that it exists, to know that it's going on, I think you need all three people all working together with one person trying to walk here. You know, you got Alice Johnson and everybody, you know, to walk. You got the Alice Johnson, the Britneys, the the Sarah Gerstens. You got the certain people that has to walk the the Weldon Angeloses of the world. They have to actually walk walk it in there to get it even on the table where the Trump family can even see it or or a presidency person that can even see what's going on. So first you got to get seen first. But to get seen is got to be heard. You know what I mean? So you got to thank everybody for even letting me be heard. And then when you come in after I get out and on the way to get out, more people hear the story. That's when you come with the clubhouse and come with everybody right there, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, they did a, an amazing job because I, I hear your story all the time now. Um, and, you know, I think it's just a, it, it's a cycle that can hopefully shed light to other people's story who are where you were a year ago, you know what I mean? Praying and crossing your fingers to, you know, make it happen. So hopefully, you know, the more we talk about you, we're also giving other people opportunities because there's 40,000 people still in jail over this bullshit when the, when the industry- And and, and you have a lot of life, you still got, you got, if you go on our site right now, 40tons.co, you can get a shirt. We're, we're making it where they start their own business. Luke has his own business because his T-shirts and, and merch that you buy with his name on it, all proceeds go straight to him, straight to his commissary account. You got Parker Coleman with 60 years. You got you got Hope for Humberto with life. You got, you know, you got you got Damon Salute. You know, we're, we're starting with, we got Pedro. You know, we're, we're, we're starting with, with our top 10 and we want we want people to be able to just support them. You don't have to support 40 times. You could just be a fan of them and they're going to get their own money. We just want to use our platform for the right, correct reasons. You know, so that's what we want people to know about 40 tons.co. We are people that have been affected by it. I have been uh Evelyn and Natalia went to trial with me. They've been affected. They had to do 87 months just for the cannabis proceeds getting put in their account. You see what I'm saying? So you know, everyone, Anthony had to leave L'Oreal three times. You feel what I'm saying? For for the continuous of the of the conspiracy of keep dipping in and out of, you know, so everyone at some 40 tons have been affected by this. You see what I'm saying? So we want to help the people that's been affected. And we got more stuff, the more bigger we get, the more things we do, the more people we're gonna help. All right. Well, I mean, that brings me to the 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 next section I want to talk about is um the world changed a lot in eight years. I'm sure. I can't even imagine how it is a completely different world that you came back to. But you actually have a solid foundation of support and people and uh, a business. So can you talk to me about adapting back to um, life and and have you know working for forty tons? Like, tell me about like 
who is 40 times like you know what I mean how, how you got into all this first of all I, th- I thought of I, I came up with 40 times when I was uh incarcerated and I told Anthony and Laurie I said man we got to come up with something that has some meaning you know so we had to start doing the paperwork and have them start doing the paperwork while I was in there you know and um with 40 tons being the name of the conspiracy, when that's why I was telling people at the beginning of the interview to go back, you know, you do your history, do your research, look up the Charlotte Observer 2000, October 2013, and look the case of Corbin Cooper, Evelyn LaChapelle, and the Tiny Way. Look up the trial. You feel what I'm saying? So when you look up the trial, you're going to see the 40 tons. Now when you see the 40 tons, you're like, oh, now it's real. So now you see that you're a part of something that's real, that's not just you know, it just didn't come up off the top of the head. You know, this is an actual fact that actually happened. So was writing letters back and forth. We was going through, how are we going to do it? How are we going to do it? You know, so, you know, when you're going through these things, there's stages, you know, there's, there, there's stages. And with me being on parole right now, there's, you know, there's no plant touching. There's no this. So I'm the chief ambassador of 40 times. You feel what I'm saying? So, you know, now on the clothing line side, now I'm one of the full owners of, of the clothing line, you know, because we got the 40 tons clothing, we have we have hats, we have accessories, we have everything that's going on. But with that, that has nothing to do with, with uh, plant touching. So, you know, we got grinders, you know, we're finna come out with the, with the 40 tons plates and all the things that's gonna be accessory wise, that's gonna be in the business too, but we're here to stay, like we're not here to be toying around, playing around. We're here to make a statement that if you want to support a brand that has really been affected, you know, by the war on cannabis and the war on drugs, you really want to be a part of something that's real. I think it's like come to 40 times. You know, it's kind of like, you know, how he was like, you don't want them dancing around in your video and all that. Come to death row. You know what I mean? Like I hate to say that, but you know, that's what we're on. You know what I mean? Come to 40 times if you really want to be a part of something that's real, you know, come over here. So you came up with the idea and hit your people up. They started the business and what it started as t-shirts. What was the first thing you guys were selling? Well, you know, first you had to go through the stages of, you know, we put it, uh, you know, L'Oreal went through all the stages of, of, of getting that community initiatives first. First we have to show she's representing the woman and the kids, everybody that's been affected by the by the war on drugs. You feel what I'm saying? Like, we're not only the one that's affected. When we're leaving, we're leaving people behind. So we needed sure. we needed that for that. So we needed to know what all areas where we're going to touch. You know, so you know you, you got to touch every little aspect of the whole forty tons because you can't just say boom you throw because then that's going to get boring. It's going to get boring after a while and just only touching one aspect. So we just try to touch all the aspects where we're going to have something. Boom, this is the program for the mothers. That's that's OK. The bigger we get. OK, we have community initiatives. OK, we need vans for the people We need when you come home that we're going to help you get a scholarship. If you want to stay in the, in, in, in the, in the weed business, you feel what I'm saying if you want to do this, then um, we're going to do that. You know, if you can't get to visit, then we can get you to visit. If you need money on your books, you need money on your books. If you just need an extra phone call, then you need an extra phone call while your loved ones away. You need to have every aspect in chalk then dot every cross T's and I's and O's and everything if you're going to really, really strap up and be a part of this industry. And, I mean, you you guys know all these things because between the, I want to say, three or four of you, you, you kind of have every angle, like you've seen every way that this affects you, right? Like you have the, the women, the children, yourself the friends that are just trying to represent so you see all of the little things that are um missing in that in that journey and that's why you guys can speak to it so well because you, you've seen each part of that experience right so we seen we've seen every aspect there is i've seen how it is to get your life washed away for the rest of your life and they throw away the key without the possibility of parole anthony has seen hey let me get let me go to jail three times for the same crime and get out, right? Evelyn has seen from a woman's perspective, like, oh shit, I just, I'm a college graduate. I'm, I'm really, I'm really smart. I really have something to bring to the world, but I can still get my life taken away for this for 87 months. 
you know what I mean? And all the th personal things that she went through leaving her daughter. You got Natalia that almost died in prison because they don't have the right care for her. She has lupus. You got L'Oreal who's have to take care of these kids and rearrange her life every three times Anthony has to go back and forth and get out of jail. And then we have the prisoners of Parker with 60 years. You got Luke with the life, Coke from Berto, Dame Salute, you feel what I'm saying? So we got the people, we got the people who's actually affected the most with the life. We got the people, at, as me as the overcome story, we got, we're trying to get every level so we can relate to you on any level that you're on. If you're on a level where you're just coming in and out of jail for cannabis, then talk to Anthony. If you're a person that got a life sentence, I take all the calls and I talk to all the people that got the life. If you're the mother, then talk to the mother. If you're the girl that you was fly and you grew up and what's called, then talk to Evelyn or Italia. And you can get shown on, on what aspect you play the part in the game and, and how it affects you. We got somebody to talk to you for every level that you're on. Corbain, how can our audience help you and your organization and other folks in your network? They can support, they can, I have a GoFundMe that that has started on Clubhouse. I did a 24-hour GoFundMe. That was the biggest, that was my biggest support yet. You know what I mean? I haven't even had a big support system like how uh, Clubhouse supported me. And um, Carlos, we did that with the New York people too, Carlos the boss. And um, they can go to Corvine Cooper on GoFundMe and they can, they can, they can donate a dollar, 50 cent, they can donate whatever, because the more that they, they donate, the more that I get donated, the more I can do the work that I really need to do because I cannot do the same exact work at Walmart or Taco Bell, you know? So the more they do that and the more that they go to the brand and you go to 40 tons.co, if you just want to support the brand, then you can get you a hat, a shirt, a t-shirt, or you can support the actual inmates, you know what I mean? And they have their own brands on our website where their money goes and the proceeds go straight to them, but we don't, we don't see any of it, you know? So they can support them. They have three ways they can support. They can smoke me, support me personally on my GoFundMe. And that just goes towards my reentry and doing the work that I need to do in order to get the message out there. Or they can go to 40tons.co and uh, support whatever it is that you like. Either just go there, read the story and see what we're about and see exactly what our brand is about. You can learn and read there or you can just go to our pages and follow us. You know, you can you can follow us. The quicker we get to 10,000 uh, followers, the quicker we can get our swipe up and the quicker we can get more people to uh, to buy just off Instagram that likes to shop black for brands. So it's a thousand ways that you can help. So now that now that uh, you're you have a company, you guys have some some movement, some programs, so many ways that you guys are affecting other people's life and, and essentially paying it back and you know doing your part if you could change the way that um the cannabis industry specifically um so it is involved with inmates what do you think is missing the first thing i would say is i would just love to see we was talking to popcorn the other day we were thinking about just starting with the one the RMAs that we have on 40 tons is, you know, let them be a part of it. Let's, let's get them some shares. You feel what I'm saying? Let's get them some shares. So when it does explode and when it does go big, you know, let's, let's let them, let's let them, let's let the real people win off of it. You know, let's let the, the right people that needs to win, win, you know, uh, like, you know, I'm tired of, uh, you know, if they just see the stuff that the people need, you know what I mean? That, that's needed in there. And it's like, damn, you know, it's like all this money being made, but no one's thinking about the people who help promote it to the first advertisers. You know, it's just these people advertise this, this thing. You can't come out with a water or oyster sunglasses, nothing that blows up this fast. No, it was already premeditated. It was already pre-done that it was already billboards been put up you know you don't need to put up a billboard you could just say boom it's legal and now all of a sudden it's it just explodes everywhere you know so you know just give 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 love to the people and, and, and sit the people at the table who deserves to sit there you know just you know sit the right sit the right people not everybody 
you know, not, we're not saying, hey, let's hold 40,000 people to the table, but we are saying at least give them a shot. You know, like, you know, at least let them try, you know, maybe all 40,000 is not supposed to sit at the table. But if everybody just had the opportunity to sit at the table of the people, I just want to see more. If I was, let's just say, yeah, let's just say, I'm not saying I was top dealer, but let's just say I was one of the top dealers. I want to see the other top dealers too sit at the table. I want to walk in some dispensary and like, oh man, what's well, so up? I see you doing it the right way now. And, you know, like I remember when back in the day when we was, had it in the trunk with the with the with the bag, you know. I, I, I want to see more of that, you know. Like, let's let the game shift over, you know. What I mean, and shout out to Virgil too. I like the Virgil when he got his license. He didn't let nobody stop him, so shout out to Virgil. Now, there's a lot of people. Um, I personally spend a lot of time with people um, in the underground that are weighing their options of whether they want to do this in the uh, regulated market. What would you tell those individuals? That's in the underground? Yeah, that are in the underground, looking at if they want to come above ground. I would say stop now. You know what I mean? I would say stop now and uh, figure out the right way to do it because you don't want to stop when it's too late. You know, so sometime it can be too late and uh, it's not legal federally. So I would say stop now. Don't 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 send your family through that pain. You know, I mean, especially if you got kids, I really say stop if you got kids, because the, the pain and the trauma that you're causing they are, are that are going to get caused by you going away for a day or five days or five years or 50 years or 10 or whatever sense that they're going to give you. That's this time you can't get back in life. It's just way too short to um, too too short to just throw it away like that. You know, what I mean, it's just we got way more important stuff to do, and we got you know you only got a limited time to be on this planet. So try to do the best that you can while you're here. And and, and what kind of support do you think uh, people battling with those decisions? What kind of support do they need from? you know, networking groups like ourselves, investors, like what are the things that you think people need help with in order to go legit? Confidence. They need the confidence that if I do give this up, is somebody going to hire me or who's going to put these lights? You know what I mean? Like who's going to pay these light bills? You know what I mean? Or who's going to pay this $6 gas that they got in California? You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, who's going to pay for this stuff? And when this is all, once you've done it for so long, let's say a person's got people that's been 10 years. I was just talking to Twin Fish the other day that uh, one of the owners eliminated. She's been doing it since 99. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you know, so she had a lot of game on how it was back in the day and how it transitioned. So you get to see, you know, Doc been in the game 40, 50 years. You feel what I'm saying? Like Doc Ray, shout out to Doc Ray. But my whole thing is, it's just, it's the confidence that you're going to need that you can be able to transition without it being, you know, you know, even, even, you know, even me getting out and that to transition to say, Hey, I'm just going to tell a story and try to live off the story and this and this and that until the thing kicks off. You know, it's even a transition for me. I thought was since I was 16. So when people read the story, I puzzled my whole life. So to change it up and say, Hey, I'm not hustling anymore. I'm just going to just, way to the ball drops you feel what i'm saying and i gotta you know and, and uh and depend on it on, on this really kicking off and um you know it took it took it took it took a lot of pride and it took a lot of things to decide for, for me to even get a gofundme you know what i mean to say no i'm dependent on this i'm dependent on the industry to have my back you know what i mean like you know that took a lot i, I, I moved out in the 11th grade so that has to tell you that i I have no problem with trying to be on my own and try to get my own, you know, so you're just trying to do it the right Bro, I, I got to uh, salute you for, like, you, you could have got out and told your story to a couple people and then kind of went into your own cocoon, you know, like, it's a lot to handle, but well, you've been out you've been vocal, you have been putting in the work, doing interviews after interview, after chatting with everybody. And I mean, I, I really, I really commend you for 
taking that. I couldn't imagine like you're learning new technology to do this. You are going from I didn't technology. Have to technology is just <laughs> I just, oh my god! I don't even want to bring that up. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean that like that's that's the testament to you. You're going through all that. Like you went, you came out swinging, right? And and all talking to all these people to get the story out is a completely different life. You weren't doing any interviews a year ago. Now you're doing tens, hundreds of them. That's crazy to completely shift like that. Yeah, it's like four today. You know, <laughs> I, I, I flew in. I had to do half of it on the plane, and I finished the other part of the live. I did a live earlier, but yeah, I got I got two more, two more today. Man, I love it. All right, so look, we're we're almost out of time, and I I, I want to be respectful of um, your time, especially. I know you're very busy. Um, looking to the future. Talk to me about what you want to see uh, the future, let's say in the next three to five years, how do you want to see the world that we live in? What would you like to see? The first things that I want to see is, I want to see the 40,000 people. You know what I mean? Like I want to just, I want the whole pro prohibition just to end and just go and let the people out. That's the first thing that I want to see. Second of all, I want to see more of the 40,000 people sitting at the table, you know what I mean? Sitting at the table the correct way, not this fake social equity stuff when they're bribing them for their license and they're giving them 1%. No, let them eat, you know, let the, let the, let the people eat whose, whose blood, sweat, and tears is on this plant, you know? So those are just the real things that I want to see happen. All right, and then uh, the future of 40 tons. Oh, 40 Tons is going to be one of the biggest brands around. Man. 40 Tons is, is going to be, a, we're starting a culture. We're not just, we're not just building a brand. We're building a culture, you know, so we're going to have it where people come home and they're a part of the culture and they're, you know, we, we would like all the 40,000 people to be a part of the culture. You feel what I'm saying? And be a part of the brand and be able to hire them on jobs. We've got the 40 Tons Productions. We're trying to branch out on everything where we can be able to hire, you know, and, if we got the vans going back to the prison, those are the 40 tons vans is going back and forth, just things that they can do that we can hire them under and then everybody can do, you know, so 40 tons is going to be around forever. And um, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be, it's going to be the biggest brand ever. It's going to be the biggest brand ever. I promise. Hey bro, I'm here for it. I'm here for it. You got our full support. Um, I know you guys are primarily the West coast, but I know you got a lot of support and love on the east coast yeah, yeah, the east coast shows uh, York, love. yeah absolutely sometimes the east coast shows more love than the west coast <laughs> hey be careful we out here man yeah it's crazy well we hope to have you out in new york when we start getting our um in-person events going forward so yeah yeah that's, what, that's, that's what we're trying to do we're trying we're trying to get the tour started like you know i got i got a i got a um I like four paid events that's coming to 710 Labs and uh, Marijuana Matters, a couple of other ones that we're doing this week that we're, 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 we're starting off. You know, I already did like the weed maps, Vanity Fair and stuff like that, but it's time for the tour to start. I'm ready to get on the road, you know, so we're, we're ready. We're going to be hitting up Zoe. Zoe Wilder, yeah. we got your number. Yeah. <laughs> She's the OG herself. Uh, look, Shout out to Zoe. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Zoe. That's a fact. If you come to the East Coast, when that's Tour, when the tour happens, you let us know. We'll make it happen. Um, man, I really appreciate your time. I really appreciate you, you being so open and transparent about your story. Um, I appreciate that, um, you know, you, you let yourself just, just be a face for 40,000 other people. You, and you don't, you really don't have to do that. You choose to do that. And, um, like I said, I, I, I commend you. I appreciate you for, for making time for us and, and working through our Zoom headaches to try to make it yeah, happen. Yeah, right, but we made it. We, we worked <laughs> through it, man. That was just, that was a sidetrack. <laughs> hey, we made it happen. Um, yo, before we wrap up, I just want to thank everybody uh, for tuning in. Um, we, we do this for, for the people and want to make sure we get the information and the resources out to you. So uh, Corvain dropped a lot of links and resources. So we'll make sure to put those um, in the YouTube description. Uh, so everybody that, that came through, we appreciate you. We have our first live event 
uh, actually on um, Friday or on Saturday, I'm sorry, Juneteenth. Uh, we just getting together in New York City, Central Park. You'll see the information on our Instagram and in our email. Uh, but I'm excited just to see some people again, some people in the cannabis community. Uh, so look forward to that. And then next week we have um, our girl Kalani coming through. We getting super techie with the cannabis world. Um, Lulu, I'll, I'll, I know that that's a, one of your best friends. So I'll let you. One of my best friends. Yeah, give Kalani the two Kalani is... Um an innovator, a digital uh, expert. So we're going to talk. We've been hearing all these things about blockchain. We've been hearing all these things about crypto. We've been hearing all these things about NFT. And my girl Kalani is going to come and break it down and see, talk about what actually can be possible for cannabis. So hope to see everyone next Wednesday where we're going to talk all about those things. Yeah, for sure. All right, Corvain, we'll let you Thank go, you, man. Thank you, Corvain. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you all. Take care.